Ladies and gentlemen of What If Sports Gridiron Football, I have decided to do something. I should have actually done this a long time ago. Uh, what is the perfect amount of minutes to give to practice time for a, for a football team? And I have a fairly decent understanding of statistics. I'm not a real math guy, but I do understand statistics and the concept of the law of diminishing returns is something that I probably should have explored a long time ago. I've been playing this game for what is it almost six years now and I've been fumbling around trying to find the perfect number of minutes to assign to practice time. So what I've done is I have I have taken over this team Winona and I am going to do an experiment and I'm going to include you guys in the experiment and let you know what the results are. So let me show you what I'm doing here. I am going to figure out what is the perfect number of minutes to give to a team practicing formations and what are going to be the results of that. And I want to determine where we reach the law of diminishing returns. Now, I don't think you're gonna, it's going to be a negative returns, uh, but what I do think is as we increase the number of minutes assigned to practicing different formations, the curve will flatten out. Okay, so, so basically what we're doing is we're going to have three minutes for this one, six minutes for special teams, Nine minutes for shotgun, 12 for eye formation, 15 for 3, 4, and so on. 18, 21, 24, 27. Now, I don't really care whether this team wins or not. I just want to figure out what is the perfect number of minutes to assign to a formation during practice time uh, before adding minutes becomes a waste of time. So, uh, so like I said, I've taken over this team. Uh, we've pretty much finished recruiting and waiting for a couple more players to, or one more player to sign. Uh, and then I'll play out the season, see how each player improves in these different formations that I'm going to be practicing. And then I will graph it out and figure out exactly where the law of diminishing returns comes into play so and then i will post these results for everyone to see okay now i'm not going to post the results immediately uh, because i want to play it out a little bit with my team see how it works out uh, but i will post this for everyone to see uh, where the law of diminishing returns sets in with the number of minutes you assign to a a formation for practice and i'll average it out for all my players and and graphically present that so anyways i'm going to sign off for now i will play out the season see what the results are graph it out and let you guys know what happens okay so we finished the season uh actually did better than i thought it would as far as record is concerned 14 and 2 and i, I made it to the second round of the playoffs uh but the world i'm in is kind of kind of empty so uh but that's not the reason why I was I was doing what I was doing here. So let's recap a little bit what I'm doing. Okay, basically we'll look at the practice plan here. And I've assigned a range from three minutes, actually from zero, from zero to three to six to nine to twelve, all the way up to, to number twenty-seven. So we're trying to determine what is the what is the the, the best possible amount of minutes to assign to a formation to experience the best possible growth uh, before you get to a point where you shouldn't add any more minutes because it's, it's a waste of time. Either the, the, uh, the, the benefit of it is, is diminishing or there's no benefit at all. Now basically the law of diminishing returns. And let me show you a graph here again. Uh, basically law of diminishing returns it increases, it increases, and then it starts increasing at a much less 
much lower rate and then finally it, it, it reaches a peak and it starts decreasing as you add minutes. Uh, now I don't expect it will diminish. I expect that as you add minutes it will just flatten out. In other words, there will be a maximum amount of minutes you should add uh, and at that maximum amount you're wasting time entering more minutes. So that's the law of diminishing returns. Uh, so let's see what the results were. Okay, let's look at the depth chart. Now one thing I want to show you uh, is some of these skill positions. Now obviously uh, adding so much practice time to formation because I was putting so much practice time into formations that I wasn't using is going to have an effect on obviously different practice areas. We, you know, where you know, wide receiver losing athleticism, uh, durability, strength, uh, and different things that you don't want them to lose. Uh, of course, that's not going to happen when you're only practicing one or two formations. Uh, so, uh, so basically, let's go, go back to the practice plan so I, can, so I can show this a little bit more. So in other words, I'm using 135 minutes for team practice on, on different formations. And there's only 45 minutes for positional practice. So in other words, they're going to lose a lot when you, when you have this many formations with this many minutes. So obviously, you, you want to balance team practice with positional practice. But the purpose of this exercise was to determine what is the best possible number of minutes to put into here. And then, of course, uh, you'd put zero in a lot of these. And that, that would free up a lot more time for this right here, which would mitigate the idea that you're going to have a wide receiver you know, losing athleticism, which you definitely don't want to lose. You don't want an, a wide receiver losing athleticism. And that is solely because I'm not giving enough practice time to, uh, to that whatever builds athleticism. So uh, now formations, you can see there's a lot here. Okay, where you know he practiced one, two, three, four, four, four offensive formations plus a, def a special teams, and I'm going to show you a graph. I did basically I did an average. Uh, I did an average of nine freshman offensive players and 10 freshman defensive players. And basically, this graph is what came up here, okay? So let me, let me, I'll tell you what, let me get this, this graph here in a, bit, a little bit better format here. Uh, let me shut it down for just a second. I'm gonna come back and have this, this graph ready in a, in a much better format. Okay, let me show you the graph I created here. Okay, and now if I had a larger sample, sample size, this graph would look a lot smoother. Uh, basically, I had nine offensive players and ten defensive players. That's 19. I'm thinking uh, 27 is a better sample size, but the larger the sample size you get, the more smooth this curve is going to be uh, and the more representative it will be. But basically, you can see uh, zero minutes is going to get you zero improvement. Improvements on, on the on the y-axis and the minutes are on the x-axis. Three minutes of practice time gets you about 13 minutes or 13 uh, improvement, whatever you know, whatever these those points are. Uh, in fact, let me bring it up here. Uh, An increase of 13 in green, okay? Uh, the formation will increase by 13. So, uh, and then of course, you know, that's a major drop in productivity there as far as minutes are concerned. You know, so, so naturally, you know, three, just going from zero to three is a major boost and then it slowly diminishes as you go up. And I would say probably sometime, you, you, it looks like you get to 24 minutes of practice time and then it flat, it's going to flatten out. So I'd say 24 would probably be the maximum amount of uh, practice time you want to devote to a formation. And you might even want to cut it back to uh, 21, maybe 22, 23, some, some place in between here. But basically, you want to, some, some place between 21 and 24 minutes, I think, is, is, the, is the optimum, okay? Uh, some place between 20, because you can see, as you're adding minutes, going from 21 to 24, the increase is very marginal. And from 24 minutes to 27 minutes, 
it's zero. There's no improvement at all. Uh, so, and I suspect if you if you go and, and test this out to 30 minutes and 33 minutes, it will continue to be at this at this level. It won't it won't diminish and it won't climb. Uh, so, so that's what the experiment was to determine what the best level of practice would be. And I would say somewhere between 21 minutes and 20, 24 minutes. That, that's probably about where I would put it because you're not getting a whole lot of return between 21 minutes and 24 minutes. Okay, so that's about it. That's about it between 21 and 24 minutes is optimal. I would say closer to 21 minutes unless you're willing to accept the marginal return uh, that you get uh, towards the upper end of that. So anyways, this, I think this has been a good experiment and especially if you want to get the most out of your pack practice plan and the number of minutes you assign to each formation and uh, get the most improvement. So there you go, between 21 and 24 minutes. I'll probably assign mine someplace closer to 21 than to 24. So anyways, uh, that's it. And hopefully this helps you in your, your game. And uh, of course, there are many aspects to the game that can make you a good player. Hopefully this, will, this one will help you as well. Joseph Hughes, signing out.